Hello, in this video I'll talk about transformer excitation current and core losses. Transformers go through extensive testing. One of the tests is excitation current and core losses. Excitation current test is a, a very important test that can help in catching problems with the core and coil before the transformer is shipped. The heart of, the tra of a transformer is core and coils. The core is made from magnetic steel, basically to contain the flux. So if we look at this little graph or sketch to the right, so you have a coil. And when, it's, when the coil is energized, it induces voltage, which allows flux to, to flow. And that flux, you want it to be contained. So that's why the core, the core is used. St uh, steel is laminated to reduce eddy uh, current losses, depending on, on the application. Different grades of core steel can be used. For high efficiency, uh, high B, what's called high B steel is used in large transformers to reduce hysteresis losses. The excitation current is supplied by applying voltage to one winding while the other winding is open to allow rated magnetic flux to flow in the core. For single phase excitation current, voltage is applied to high voltage winding. It's the opposite. For three phase excitation current, voltage is applied to the low side. And the reason being is because the low side has lowest voltage. So now let's look at single phase excitation current test uh, for single phase transforms. So the voltage is applied to the high side winding while the low voltage winding is left open. So it depends on, on the size of the transformers. So for like uh, transformers above uh, 12 kV, typically 10 kV excitation is applied. So as you can see here is a single phase transformers. Here's the high side, here's the low side. So the high side, you apply voltage, which would allow the core to be excited. And the low voltage winding is, is left open. So, now, so for single phase excitation current test, performed on three phase transformers connected as a, as a Y. Typically the outer phases have similar excitation current. So if you have A, B, C phases with B phase is in, is in the middle, the A and C phases will have kind of similar, uh, almost the same uh, excitation current value which will be higher than the middle phase. And the reason being for that is because those outer phases have a long magnetic path. For uh, transformers with LTC or low tap changer with a reactor or preventive auto transformer, uh, bridging taps basically uh, taps with odd numbers, so 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, so on and so forth, will have higher excitation current than non-bridging taps. The reason being is because the PA or the preventive auto transformers is excited when the, when the tap changer is connected on the bridging taps. So here is a transformer, here is a winding connected as a Y. So there's one phase, here's the second phase, the third phase. So you supply one winding and you connect it a line to neutral. And you apply the voltage to 
with the other winding open. The winding that's not tested is, is left open. For single phase excitation current tests on three phase transformers connected as a delta. So what you do is you apply voltage to one winding, so it's phase to phase. The third phase you ground and the meter, basically the ammeter will be connected somewhere here, but this ground here is kind of beyond the ammeter because you don't want uh, current from the non-tested terminal to impact the, the, the result. So uh, the MMF or magnetic motive force is equal to amper turns or number of turns times current, which is also equal to reluctance times the flux. So from this we can see that the current is equal to reluctance times the flux divided by the number of turns. So if reluctance is big, big you know, so the core the core legs and yokes are not um, solid. You, you know, the, the legs are made separate and the yokes are made separate, then they are stacked. So the joints may not match perfectly, so there might be a gap. So if there is a gap, because core steel has a high permeability and the gap is kind of like air, so less permeability. So reluctance will be higher at the jo at the joints if there is a gap. So if there's a if reluctance is higher, you would need more excitation current for the rated flux to flow. The, another thing, if some turns are shorted, the current will be, be will be higher. So this is kind of this formula kind of give us some insight of what's going on around the core and the windings. So what is the purpose of performing excitation current tests? The excitation current is an important test. The excitation current test will detect a couple things. If there are shorter turns, it will also detect shorter the wind into ground, core lamination, insulation damage. So the the core steel is made is made from laminated from laminated steel, and each lamination it has a coating to prevent short uh, prevent uh, prevent shortening to the next lamination. So if that insulation is scratched or damaged. So you will have circulating current in that area. It will also detect issues with tap changers and so on and so forth. So excitation current test is a, is a very important test. So these issues basically will translate into high current. And while performing excitation current, no load or core losses are also measured. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.